Right. So um, now we're going to do uh, the last topic of the chapter. That is the magnetic property and electrical property. So in a magnetic property, electrical property, basically we are just going to uh, give the introduction for the magnetic and electrical property. We will be studying in detail in your physics chapter, physics subject. So when we speak about the magnetic property, in the types of magnetic property, basically we very well know metals are highly conducting in nature. Why are they conducting? Because they try to emit electrons due to the photoelectric effect and due to this excitation of electrons <coughs> this particular metal one one electron the other it starts conducting uh, uh, electricity right now what happens when i take a magnet and when i introduce these solids or when i introduce this uh, solids in the presence of magnetic field let us study so basically your magnetic or types of magnetic substances are uh, paramagnetic substances dia this is what you have studied in your grade 8 para dia paramagnetic diamagnetic ferromagnetic antiferro and ferric right now that's not a problem that's easy to remember make try to make a table like this with examples so that if the board is asking you from any of these examples basically board tries to question you from the examples they will not ask you why what is antiferro or this one is this they will basically ask you for example they may ask you oxygen though it is paired why is it paramagnetic this is how they're going to ask you they'll ask you uh, suppose uh, silicon right or they may ask you suppose iron why is this showing ferromagnet why is this called a permanent magnet let us see all those so when i speak about paramagnetic substances i've written or tabulated into description domains what are domains now when i take a particular metal i already said you have electrons right these electrons are we already know they have opposite spins yes or no yes this is what you have studied uh, the, because of these opposite spins right i they are going to, if they are aligning together we call it as paired suppose if i have single it is unpaired if i have paired up it is called paired right diamagnetic these electrons or <coughs> paired or unpaired electrons i call them as domains i'm going to use a word called domains so this is the word electrons indirectly i'm talking about electrons in between i'm i may also use a word called magnetic dipoles right magnetic dipoles both are same don't get confused right magnetic dipoles are domains now when i speak about paramagnetic substances <coughs> basically the electron or the domain suppose i am taking this right i'm going to place them in the presence of a magnet when i'm placing them in the presence of a magnet the electrons or the domains or the mobile dipoles or sorry the magnetic dipoles they are going to arrange i said para right all the electrons are going to get a Aligned or all are unpaired, right? Their domains or mobile domains. So I'm just going to mobile magnetic domain and dipoles. They are they all are unpaired because of this unpaired electrons or unpaired uh, presence of these electrons. They are, if I say, paramagnetic <laughs> substances are attracted towards magnet because of their domain arrangement in parallel means all are half filled they are attracted towards magnets right they are attracted so i'll write attracted because we are speaking about magnetic field attracted right now this attraction now suppose if i take out that magnet if i'm going to take out this bar magnet immediately paramagnetic substances the alignment of domain changes in this direction and and it loses magnetism when magnet in the presence of magnet it is attracted when it is when the there is no magnet it it loses magnetism so i'm writing two words let us learn both the possibilities without magnet this is without magnet right done so in the presence of magnet fair and good attracted when that take out it will lose the magnetism and it is lost right let me come back to diamagnetism when i speak about diamagnetism let me see the magnetic dipoles in diamagnetism for example in these compounds all the domains are paired <coughs> like this see what's happening when they are paired suppose i'm placing a bar magnet here and when i observe all the domains are paired if there is if they're paired can it conduct electricity does it sorry can it conduct magnetic field will it show magnetic field no right because this is paired this is paired here i have a possibility of the uh, alignment of the domains but here there is no possibility because they're paired right 
so if i write clearly diamagnetic substances are feebly repelled so feebly repelled because of what the feebly repelled of because of paired domains or magnetic pair dipoles are paired feebly repelled now when i speak about ferromagnetic substances basically in ferromagnetic substances if i say these are permanent di permanent okay i am writing in red these are permanent magnets remember we very well know as a child we used to use magnets for playing right these are permanent magnets ma'am why are they called permanent magnets when i look into their magnetic dipoles or their domains the domains are like this just see <coughs> now your uh, ferro up your again it's like this only right up up and up yes ma'am what happened here para you said this is also pair, uh, attracted here you said again rotate but what is the difference the difference between ferro and para is i said if i remove the magnet without magnet it loses magnetism but here even if i remove the magnet this particular ferro is going to attain permanent magnetism in that because the alignment of electron all are in pair so that is the reason i call them as permanent without magnet also <laughs> yes isn't it you use magnets right without them also the alignment is like that so they are permanent magnets when i speak about antiferro one question was asked why is observe carefully why is manganese oxide considered as or why is manganese oxide having zero dipole moment right so what actually is happening in manganese oxide why does it showed zero or nil null dipole moment what is null dipole moment that is mu which is represented by mu okay yes now in antiferro what happens is <coughs> when these domains try to arrange observe now what did i put i put all up then i paired up then i took all on one direction and paired because they we need uh, the creation of magnetism now in antiferro so look here one up right now to uh, nullify this you have a set like this suppose if i have two like this i have one more set like this isn't it nullified yes now i have to unpair now one more set like this that means every time there is a balancing pause up spin low spin cancel up spin low spin cancel up spin low spin cancel so because of this the net magnetic moment so i should write net magnetic moment is zero Mag magnetic moment is zero why both the spins are getting cancelled so you can write why is manganese oxide having zero dipole because the uh, the magnetic or the magnetic dipoles or the domains cancel each other that is what let me come back to ferrimagnetism now i have to tell you one more thing okay let me come this then i'll explain in ferrimagnetism when i take about ferrites okay yes <laughs> so in ferrites uh, basically you have two things you have to remember parallel parallel and anti parallel spins parallel and anti parallel spins that means suppose if i take right if i take the ferro anti uh, ferry magnetism i have one spin like this okay i have one more spin like this then i have one more spin like it means some are parallel in nature some are anti parallel in nature some you know you know there is like this means some are parallel opposite some are again anti parallel parallel to the magnet anti parallel to the magnet parallel to the magnet anti parallel to the magnet these are completely up these are down so because of this the ferry magnetic substances are also called induced like they align in the presence of a magnet and they show this property or magnetic property because of this alignment there is certain amount of dipole so there is certain amount of net mu or net magnetic moment net magnetic moment is present is present okay certain amount of magnetism is still present because of parallel and anti parallel right so this is what i have studied or this is what we have studied explain but apart from all these there is one question asked called what is curie temperature okay what is curie temperature remember now every element suppose if i speak about ferro i said there are permanent magnets but are they really permanent forever no remember every metal has a certain amount of temperature called curie temperature for example cobalt has a curie temperature of 1137 
See, what happens is beyond this temperature, suppose this cobalt, if, re if it reaches beyond this temperature, it immediately loses its magnetism. Okay, so Curie temperature is a temperature, temperature beyond which, beyond which metal loses, metal loses its ferromagnetism, ferromagnetism right and uh, if beyond every uh, beyond this temperature it will not behave as a permanent magnet so if they ask you why, why does cobalt at 1137 behave, 37 behave as a paramagnetic substances you should say that is its curie temperature i can't expect its domains to get aligned to the magnet